Good morning. The St. Regis Parish Faith Community gathers for the liturgical celebration of the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We ask you to fully participate in the liturgy as a community by praying and singing together. There are five announcements. The 500 Club have, has nine tickets available. Please call or visit the parish office to reserve a ticket to win $500 as a member of the 500 Club. The faith formation classes for kindergarten through grade five and Middle Youth Ministry will have a Makeup Religious Education Day this Monday, January 29th. That's Makeup Day for Religious Education, kindergarten through eighth grade, this Monday, January 29th. The Faith Formation Department is offering a biblical, a biblical walk through the Mass. There will be an oral summary and then a video presentation. If you want to learn about the biblical roots of the Bible, please register for a biblical walk through the Mass, which starts on February 13th and runs for five weeks. More information is in the bulletin. All parish lectors are invited to attend a one-hour lecture session on Thursday, February 8th at 7 p.m. Call Florence with regrets only. That's lecture session, Thursday, February 8th, 7 p.m. Coffee and donuts after both masses next weekend in Gillen Hall. Coffee and donuts for all after masses next weekend. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see everybody here. Let's take a moment and stand and welcome one another in the Lord's peace. Let's take a moment and open our hymnals to our opening hymn. 711, God our God of, dif of distant ages, 711. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. Stand in air as we're doing the third verse. I'm looking over. Dan's the only one a little bit shorter than me. You were about taller than me. And then these two little munchkins, and it, if you in section three would have seen it great, it just was a straight line down. 
And uh, kind of funny, and you two were about that size when I first came here. So it's amazing to watch everyone grow up. Um, we gather for our prayer. We come to realize that our God is the Holy One of God. Uh, we hear about that in the scripture readings today. And that Holy One of God is here to strengthen us, to support us, to encourage us, to heal us. And one of the healings that he gives us is through the Sacrament of Reconciliation, the Penitential Rite, which we are about to celebrate, but also for whatever other things that weigh us down, he is there to support us and to uh, get us through those difficult times. So as we begin our prayer, we pause to reflect upon that Holy One who is always present with us uh, and always is encouraging us to turn to him with our needs. And we do that at this time as we ask for his help, his guidance, his mercy and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are the Holy One of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You free us from sin. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you bless us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Thank you. Grant us, O Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. And we ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now we ask our youngsters if they would come forward, please. Hi, Kara. Good morning, guys. Hello there. Comes another one. How are you? Good. Thank you. Comes. Oh, I was. I was just thinking they're getting about that age that they could start. That's great. Excellent. I'm trying to figure out what she's got in her bag. I see her holding a little car or a fire truck. Yep, there it is. Okay. First time. That reminds me of the Subaru commercial I'm seeing on TV, and they got the dogs now advertising the cars, and the two parent dogs are taking the little one to obedience school, and as the little puppy finally gets out of the car and looks back with a tear in its eye, you can see the mother driving the Subaru with wiping away a tear from her eye. And so if mommy wants to go, if you want, mommy can go with you. Oh, brother's coming now. You know, if I talk here long enough, we'll have everybody joining in. Of course, you won't be happy about that, will you? Okay, uh, let's see. Since this is your first day, would you like to carry the book? Okay, this is your very first time, so come on up. Okay, excellent. And hold on, we're going to say a little prayer, asking that all of us allow ourselves to be open to God's Spirit as he talks to us through the Bible. And the people all say, Amen. Amen. Okay, hold it up. Send forth the children of God, let them hear the good news. Send forth the children of God, let them hear the good news. Send forth the children of God, let them hear the good news. Send forth the children of God.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Herb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see his great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin. I will put my words in his mouth. He shall tell them all that I commanded him. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, 
not to impose restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A people in darkness have seen a great light. A radiant dawn shines on those lost in death. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with each of you. And now let us listen attentively to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue, and he taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now in their synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet. Come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Jesus' fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In last week's gospel passage, we were hearing the calling of the first disciples, uh, four of them he called, and today we pick up where we left off in Mark's gospel, and those new disciples are now with Jesus in the synagogue on the Sabbath, listening to him teach the people who are gathered. Now the synagogues were much smaller than the temple in Jerusalem. The synagogues were small community uh, village uh, gatherings that would maybe hold and maybe about 20 families or so, a uh, little bit larger than some of the others. But the synagogue is where Jesus was, and typically on the Sabbath, the uh, custom was that one of the men of the community would come forward to share some of the Torah with the people, some of the prophets with the people, and then to the best of his ability to try to explain how that applied in their lives. Uh, how they should try to incorporate that in their lives. And so here they are. It's Jesus' turn uh, to share some of the scripture with the people and to break it open. And Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus was teaching that day, but Mark does tell us that the people were astounded with his wisdom, with his knowledge, and as as Mark says, He taught with authority, not like the scribes and the Pharisees. And what Mark means by that is that the other people or the scribes and the Pharisees who would get up and teach, they would always be making reference to this person said this, and he said, and they would just keep going back and forth instead of just trying to teach from their minds and their hearts. And so Jesus definitely was setting a new precedent how to uh, explain the scripture and how to apply it to the people. And then we hear about Jesus expelling the demon from the man. The demon recognizes who Jesus is, the Holy One of God, and Jesus recognizes who the devil devil is, the evil one. And the two now are going to see who is going to win out. And we know that Jesus is always going to win when it comes to the demon. And while while the demon is taunting Jesus, Jesus silences him, 
and expels him from the man. And now, twice in the same Sunday gathering, the people are surprised again as they look and truly amazed, ask, who is this guy? He not only teaches with wisdom and authority, but he is able to expel demons out of the lives of other people. And so they are questioning what is happening in their midst at this time. What's going on is Mark is writing for a community that is under the oppressive regime and power of Rome. Uh, we recall how during the season of Advent, as the peop- our readings are sharing with us how the people are looking forward to the Messiah, the promised Messiah, their idea of a Messiah would be someone who would come and help alleviate some of the political oppression that they are experiencing. As we know, that's not the role that Jesus took. He came to bring uh, relief from some of the spiritual oppression that people were experiencing. And so Mark, in a sense, is encouraging his people to hang in there because Jesus' power, Jesus' promises are greater and stronger than any oppressive force that may come into the people's lives. 2,000 years later, we are still experiencing some of that same oppression within our lives. We are challenged by our own demons, both personal and communal. And we also desire words of encouragement and a reminder that Jesus is the Holy One who liberates and acts with true compassion. And so the gospel serves as a beautiful reminder for all of us today and every day how Jesus came in to show us of the love, the mercy, and the kindness of God for each and every one of us. St. Paul, in in this selection from his letter to the Corinthians, ties in beautifully with this gospel passage. Paul tells his audience, Paul is telling you and me today, I should like you to be free of anxieties. He's praying that whatever weighs us down, we could be freed of it. Paul is trying to remind his people of the shortness of this life with its difficulties when put next to the length of eternity. He is reminding them how in their different uh, facets of life, married, single, working, whatever it might be, they all have their particular uh, concerns. But what Paul is saying is he wants them to to remember the eternal reward that awaits each of them. Even though this present life is weighing them down, keep in mind there is something much greater that awaits you, that awaits us. And so hang in there. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. Now, as we reflect upon these readings, we probably have various thoughts and reactions about them. I think most of us, if not all of us from time to time, will experience some sort of apprehension or anxiety. No matter how strong we may feel, no matter how macho we may think we are, and whatever kind of outward appearance we try to display, if we are honest, we have to admit that there are times that we question the events around us and how they affect us. We do experience an inner angst we do experience a deep inner anxiety, such as events that cause unrest in our families or communities, perhaps unrest at work, or uh, will I have a job tomorrow? Will I have a paycheck? There's events that cause unrest in our schools as well as within our communities. Then we look at the problems within the world, or perhaps the demons that we wrestle with is a habit or a sin that we continually struggle with and pray that we could be rid of it. Whenever we begin to feel those um, feelings uh, building up within ourselves, we turn to God in prayer. And that's what Jesus continually reminds his disciples, his followers, and he continues to remind us to turn to him in prayer. While the events may not change, what will change is how we react to them. We will be able to face them more peacefully rather than becoming unsettled by them, a basket case, if you would. And it kind of makes me think of this serenity prayer as we listen to today's readings and the power of Jesus that is always available to us. 
The serenity prayer reminds us to ask God for the serenity or the peace to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things that I am able to change, and wisdom to know the difference. In other words, wisdom to know what I can change and what is out of my control. Paul's message of hope, along with Mark's gospel and his encouraging message of Jesus' healing power and promises, are a reminder that the Holy One of God is always with us. He will not abandon us. Not only has Jesus liberated us from eternal death and sin, he has also promised to be with us until the end of time. And recalling a gospel passage from a few weeks ago, we are reminded how Jesus told us to turn to him with whatever it is that weighs us down in life, whether it is sickness, whether it is death, whether it is uh, financial problems, whether it is a spiritual or, or emotional problem, whatever it is, Jesus told us, take his yoke and put it on, our uh, put it on his shoulders and he will carry the weight for us so that we can live life and live life to the fullest. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who shepherd our church, may God grant them perseverance as they follow the Lord's call, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our elected leaders, may they be inspired to listen to God's work, word and work for justice and peace in the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For missionaries who face danger and persecution, may they be protected by the strength that comes from knowing and following God's way, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For young people in our parish, discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may they be strengthened by our love, support, and prayers. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, may they know the forgiveness of God and come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way the living and deceased members of St. Regis Parish family. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our men and women in the armed services, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our Jewish brothers and sisters, that peace be restored to their homeland, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we come before you, giving you thanks for all the many ways you share your love with us, and we ask that you hear and answer our prayers in your infinite wisdom. We also pray, Lord, that each of us in our own individual ways are turning to you with our special needs. 
Help us to recognize your presence in our lives and how you are there to help us in all things. We make this prayer in your holy name and united with the name of Mary. Amen. Amen.